Colonel Peter, sir, please, we must go now. It's seven o'clock. Good morning. This is Today with Nick Robinson and John Humphreys. And you can hear more of yesterday in Parliament at about ten to nine on Radio 4 Long Wave and Digital. Time now, 7.24 time. The new figures published which show one in every eight workers in the country is living in poverty. Those figures come from the uh, Joseph Rout Trust. Define poverty. Poverty is when you haven't got enough to get by. We estimate that 13 and a half million people in this country are living at a standard which their fellow citizens would think is not acceptable. They haven't got enough to make ends meet. They're making those difficult choices between eating and eating. Uh, I raise it because the accepted definition internationally is living on less than 60% of the national income. It is, and that definition has been around for a very long time. In this country, we estimate that that figure of 13.5 million people living in that position do represent 60% of the median income. People to become more comfortable in their poverty or to have more money. People need to have more money in order to lead decent lives, do well at work, and contribute to our society. The news headlines this morning. Analysis of NHS data shows that more than one in ten patients need urgent care in England face a long wait for a hospital bed. And that is all from us. Sorry to say, Dave from Melbourne and Tim DeFerrin. Good morning. I could better see this. Sure, no problem. Are you well? I'm very well, thank you. How is he? He's okay, but he's a marked chest infection, so doctor has given him antibiotics. Okay, thanks. Hello, sweetheart. You've been here long? Just got here, Dad. What have you been up to, then? Well, you know, work and stuff. How are you feeling? Shit. Oh. Have you taken the pills? Yeah, well, they ain't gonna do nothing, are they? You found that packy waster yet? No, Dad. No, I told you it was no good. I told you not to get involved with them, so. <coughs> that one never gonna work. I said to your mother, 
That will end in tears, that will. Play another record, Dad. Oh, well. You don't learn nothing without making mistakes. God knows I made a few. Do you want a cup of tea? Yeah, go on then. Digestive? Yeah, go on then. They're almost gone. I'll get you some more when I'm out. Yeah, you do that. Use my card. You still got it, ain't you? Yes, Dad. You're a good girl. Back in a minute. Jess, my darling, promise me you'll take care of him. Look after him for me, Jess, promise. Does she? Let that be a lesson to us all. Good morning, Jess. How is he? You know, the same. Oh, uh, Derek wants to see you. What about? Dunno. He's in meeting room one. your father? He's fine, thanks. Good. Ah, Anne, come in. I've asked Anne to join us, if you don't mind. There's something I need to show you. A letter came through this morning from the council tax department. Another of its citizens, hopelessly in arrears, wants us to collect. Now, look, Jess, it's like so this. So am I being dismissed? We are going to have to let you go. We can't have this, not here. Why? Am I not doing the job to your satisfaction? Unless it has escaped your attention, this is a debt collection agency. It's highly embarrassing to be asked to collect a debt from one of our own employees. It's just not possible for you to work in the circumstances. I have no choice. You mean it's not your decision? Yes, it's my decision. Do you have a choice? No. What I mean is... What you mean is that because I'm struggling to pay my council tax, the obvious solution is to take away my income and any chance I have of paying it off. I need to work, Derek. I need to pay my bills. What else do you have? Mortgage? Utilities? Credit cards? Payday loan? Thought so. 
I'm sorry, but your contract does not allow for this. You're in breach of your terms of employment. Tell me what I need to do. I know it's a shock. It's not a shock. If I might offer you some advice. The best thing you can do is go through the bankruptcy process. And when you come out the other end, you might be able to apply for your job back. Might. I can't make any promises, but I would have no objections. Would you, Anne? No. No. Oh, well, that's all right then. I know it's hard, but you have to appreciate my position. This is very hard for me too. Hard for you? You'll have forgotten about it tomorrow. Tomorrow will still be hard for me. And the day after, and the day after that. I did not get you into this position. I've only got myself to blame. And we'll help you clear your desk. Quietly, if you please. We don't want to upset the others. Jess? Jess, I wanted to say goodbye. And good luck. You're a good girl, Jess. Too good for you. Good afternoon, this is Khalid. Is your husband at home, by any chance? No. He's out. He's out a lot, isn't he? Not very considerate, is it? Leaving a young wife at home to deal with his business affairs? I haven't got it. Why not? Get paid Friday. It's due today. I'll have it Friday. It'll be an extra 50 by then. Or maybe we could negotiate a discount.
Michael, good morning to you. Fine, thanks. Just walked through the door. <laughs> yes, well, you know what these long flights are like. Yes, I did. But I'm afraid it's not very good. It was all very disheartening. I just don't know what else to do. No, I won't. But it's very hard. I've never felt so despondent. Thank you. All the best. Oh, love to Emma. Bye. Oh, Yvetta, it's you. I didn't expect you were here today. I just came to return these. Thank you. Good luck in your new job. Colonel, did you find anything? No. I'm very sorry for you. Bye-bye. Bye, Yvetta. on the rat. Yeah, he's had a few, like. So I says, you all right, mate? All concerned, like? And, like, you won't guess what he says to me, like, go on. Have a guess. Go on. Why don't you just fuck off back the way you came from? Excuse my face. What? Birmingham. And then you won't guess what he says next. Go on. Have a guess. Guess what he says. Why don't you just fuck off back to Birmingham? Is that busy? If you're prickers, do we not bleed? That's an old Muslim proverb, that is. And I says, right, mate. Just get out. He just falls out and he legs it indoors without pain. For the left day, I goes down in the cop shop, right? And I put him in a complaint for racial abuse and theft. And there's his copper. He goes off and comes back. He's only the bloody chief constable. Yeah? If you're in the cap, he's a top copper. Do you know what I mean? It's been a bit of a misunderstanding, old chap. That it was a drink and a bit of banter and that he didn't mean nothing about it. He slipped me 50 quid, like. And tells me not to say anything, like. He, he admired what we do for the country, like him. And that to keep up the good work like it. Nice as point. I'll tell you what that is. That's a drink that is. That's what the drink does to people. It brings out the dark side. Here you are, some James Hospice. There you go, love. It's a funny visiting time, isn't it? Are they open? Or are you the night shift? <laughs> Really sorry, love. I got a big mouth. How much is that? It's nothing, love. It's on the house. Thank you very much. You mind how you go. Here. How long are you gonna be? I don't know. Half an hour. I'll wait for you. Yes, my darling. Promise me you'll take care of him. I don't know what's going to happen to him now. He was always useless at looking after himself. He loves you a lot, you know. We both do. 
And I loved him too, once. He was well handsome. I still love him, despite everything he did. Your dad ain't a bad man, Jess. He didn't mean you no harm. He just can't help it. Look after him for me, Jess. Promise. Mrs. Galeed, uh, we're from... I know where you're from. Uh, Mrs. Galeed? Mrs. Galeed, unless you or your husband uh, settle your account immediately, or at least make a minimum payment, I'm afraid we're authorised to turn off your supply. Disconnected your supply. If you'd like to uh, call this number, make a minimum payment, they can reconnect you. We'll 
we'll see ourselves out. He's gone, Mum. I've left him there. I just bet they'll sort something out. There's nothing more I can do. I've got nothing left. I have to go. Probably won't be back. Love you, Mum.
Sensitive. No sense of humour, these foreigners. There's laws against sexual harassment, you know. You better hope she don't know what they are. I'm not paranoid. I'm just sick to death of you and your disgusting little obsessions. Never bothered you back in the old days. Well, back then, I was young and impressionable and love-struck. And you were slim and funny and good-looking. So? What's changed? Where do I start? Anyway, too much stuff to do, so you better get your bloody marigolds on. Right, love. Um, I wonder if I could speak to the manager, please. Well, that'll be me. What can I do for you? Um, you've got a sign on your door about staff. You got any experience? Um, what kind of? Done anything like this before? Well, um, sort of. Uh, office cleaning and reception work. Neurologist. No. Gap you? Run away? No. Well, I just need a job and a place to stay. You look like you could do with some food inside you. Go and take a seat over there. We'll have a chat when I'm off. What's your name? Alice. Are you sure about that? Yes. Where are you from? Nowhere, really. Where do you live? I knew it. Who are you running from? Old Bill? Husband? No. I just I had to get away for a bit. And why is that then? I'm sorry. I've been wasting your time. How much for the lunch? Sit down, love. 
OK, you need a job and I need some help. It's minimum wage, two hours cleaning, bar, restaurant, toilets, windows, three hours serving lunches, five hours serving dinners. One day off, except for cleaning, which is every day, unless I say otherwise. You get a £4 daily food allowance, anything above that comes out of your wages. You need somewhere to stay? We've a spare staff room you can rent, until you find somewhere else. It's not the presidential suite, but it'll do. You start now? Okay? Alice? Okay. Thanks. Bring your stuff, I'll show you up. <laughs> You'll find towels, soap and stuff in the store along the corridor next to the bathroom. There's the key. Keep it locked. In there as well you'll find staff uniform. White blouse, black skirt, apron when you're serving. Black t-shirt, pants and apron when you're cleaning. To be worn at all times on duty, your job to keep them clean and presentable. Washing machines downstairs in the cellar. All the restaurant linen goes in the main laundry, which is collected once a week. Right, it's three now. I'll give you till five to settle in and smarten up. And then I'll see you downstairs for a quick tour, okay? Oh, I'm Trish, by the way. The gormless one's my other half, Dave. Thanks, Trish. You'll be all right here. You must be Alice. I'm Dave, the boss. Oh, I thought Trish was... We both are, but, well, I'm in charge. Oh, I see. How do you do? I see you two have met. OK, Alice, let's get to it. in there too. You've done well this week. I'm impressed. Look, there's no pay slip. You're off the grid. I thought you might prefer it that way. It suits me too. Just, just don't tell anyone, okay? Check you're happy with the money. Thanks. Well, week one over and done. How are you getting on with Dave? Fine. He's nice. Everyone's nice. Well, watch yourself. Wandering hands. Wandered over me once. Anyway, let me know if he annoys you. Go on then, work to do. You know, me and Trisha are well pleased with you, Alice. Thanks, Dave. I'm grateful to you both for giving me a chance. Yeah, well, hard to get good stuff. Right, now then, uh, party of 12 coming in for lunch, British Legion annual reunion, <laughs> bunch of old geezers. 
Now you watch yourself with them. One of them will try and touch you up. <laughs> I'll be watching, but you tell me if you get any hassle, I'll sort them out. Michael, how the devil are you? Fine, thanks. Couldn't be better. Oh, messing about on the river, as it happens. Thought I'd have a few days away in the nice weather. <laughs> Perks of retirement, old boy. You should try it sometime. Ah, oh, well, yes, there is that. And how is the lovely lady, then? Still spending your money? <laughs> Give her a big hug from me. We must get together when I'm back. It breaks my heart to think about it. But in the circumstances, another look might be in order. You're right, Michael, as always. OK, then. I'll call you next week and we'll fix up a meeting. Uh, love to Emma. Bye. They had a good time. See, Alice, was I right or was I right? What? Oh, I saw Squadron Leader, what's his name, with his arm around you, having a good feel. Man, the old bastard. Uh, he has trouble walking. I was just helping him on the bus. Don't give me that. He can walk all right. He tried it on with Olga when she was here. She didn't have to give him a good slap. <laughs> had to get rid of her, of course. Can't be having that, slapping the punt. Isn't that right, Trish? What? That Russian girl, Olga, gave old Douglas Bader a poke in the eye last time he was in. Check. Check what? She was Czech and her name was Katja. Yeah, whatever. Anyway, we had to let her go, didn't we? Oh, she walked out, if you remember. Yeah, before she got the order with a boot. Well done, Alice. I think you made an impression today. I think I need to lie down after that. <laughs> See you later. Oh, hi, Alice. Yeah, I'm tired. Been a long day. Welcome for 24-7 hospitality. <laughs> no rest for the wicked. Oh, I'm enjoying it. Look, like I said before, you've been brilliant. Now listen, Trish normally does the wages, but I think you deserve a bit of a bonus for all the work you've done. You don't need to do that, Dave. I want to. You deserve it. I own a business. It's my money, I can do what I want with it. And I'm going to give you a bit extra. Well, if you really want to. Thanks, Dave. Just don't tell Trish. Between me and you. Know what I mean? Don't want her thinking I've got any favourites. Even if I do. Good 
Good night, Dave. Good night, Alice. Strange girl. Yeah, she's certainly got an hang of poor two. She don't say much. She don't get anything away. You'll have to get to the bottom of it. Yeah, I don't want to freak her out. I could have a word. You will leave her alone. You off then? Yes, that's all right. Of course. Busy day tomorrow, lots of bookings, so get some rest. Oh, by the way, I put a bottle of perfume and some other bits in your room. Dave gave it me a while back and it really doesn't suit me. If you don't like it, just spin it, but I ain't going to use it. Thanks. No worries. Night. Night. Okay, anything else we need? It's all on the list. I'm just off to the bank and then the cash and carry to get a few things. Oh, you smell nice. Is it okay? Yeah, it's lovely. Thank you. And that colour really suits you too. Make sure you take it off before service though. We don't want the punters getting the wrong idea. Yes, of course. See you later. I almost cut my finger off. What are you doing? Dave, don't. Oh, come on, Alice. I just want you to know how much you're appreciated. Where's my bonus? Oh, I get you. You want your bonus, eh? Well, you stay there and don't move. Serious Alice has got a little bit of personality in her after all. <laughs> you can't go leading a bloke on like that. I didn't lead you on. I think you did. What was all that perfume and makeup for then? Who was that for? That was. for me. For you? Leave it out. I know what you're up to. You're just a little tease, that's what you are. I know your sort. We don't want none of that round here. Now then, I'm prepared to overlook this little incident. Because that's the sort of bloke I am. And we all make mistakes. 
I'm going to give you a second chance, right? It's up to you. You can either pack your bags and get off back down a towpath, or you can stay here and be nice. Which is it? I want to stay. Please. And be nice. went and forgot the money. Got halfway there before I realised. You all right? Me? Yeah. Alice gone out? Um, don't know. Went upstairs, I think. I thought she might like to come with me. I'll, I'll go ask. No, no, um, she went for a lie down. She's, uh, she wasn't feeling well. Oh, I'll go see if she's okay then. No, no, it's, it's just headache. She's, she's all right. Right. Right, well, um, I'll be off then. Struggle. What? I don't think she said that. Struggle? No, you crack up and get out. Oh, 
You looked a bit tired, you know. They're a hungry lot. Oh, yeah. Mind you, they haven't got much else to worry about, have they? Just finding something to eat and looking after the little ones. That's the girls, of course. It's them boys that causes all the bother. Always fighting with each other and everything. Trying to be top dog. Some things never change. Would you like a sandwich? Thank you, dear. That's very kind. I am feeling a bit peckish. I gave me last crust to that foot. Would you like some water? No, thanks. I want a wee. You know, I was your age once, long time ago, but it feels like yesterday. I don't know where the time goes. I think it goes faster and faster the older you get. You get on with your life and then before you know it, whoosh, it's all gone. But in here, I'm still 18. We didn't have much when we was young. Me father was away months at a time, working on ships and that. And I looked after me little brothers after me mum died. But we was happy. We managed, we made do. Suppose we could do nothing else. 
You just have to get on with it. And don't fret about stuff you can do nothing about, my dad always said. And don't give up. That's what he said when he went away. Never give up. And after a few months, he'd come back and he'd, oh, he'd bring us sweets from India, tea from China and, and beads from Africa. And then he was off again. But one day, he never came back. They said his ship was missing. And I thought, well, that's it. Might as well jump in the river. But he never gave up. And we never gave up, neither. And it must have been about two years. He came walking up the backyard with his duffel bag on his shoulder as if nothing had happened. And I ran and I flung myself into his arms and he lifted me up high and I hugged him. And it was as if I was on top of the world. Only one left. Just me. But they're still in here. I talk to them every day, even after all this time. It's what keeps you going. Love. That's what keeps you going. You don't need nothing else. I bet you got a lot of love in you. You'll be all right. Love will keep you strong and keep you going. And in the end, you and yours will be all right. You'll see. Dear? Uh, no. I'm, uh, just going for a walk. Well, have a nice walk, wherever you're going to. Yes. Well, must be off. Nice to meet you. Bye, dear. Take care.
Can't stay out in this. Well, come down. No, no, it's fine. I'm sorry to trouble you. Look here. You'll get pneumonia if you stay out there. Here, give me that. Watch your head. I'm sorry, I don't want to bother you. I'll put the kettle on. You need something warm. Come on, come on. Don't just stand there. Come in here and dry yourself. Goodness me, you're soaking. Have you got anything to change into? In the rucksack, but I expect everything's wet. Don't worry, I'll soon get warm. Hmm. This is the best I can do, I'm afraid, but it's dry and warm. Go back there and take off that wet stuff and put this on. No, I'm fine, honest. Now look here, I'm captain of this ship, and whilst on board you'll do as you're told. I will not tolerate insubordination on my vessel. Habit of a lifetime, giving orders. But you know I'm right. Go on. Sit down there and get warm. Thank you. I might say you picked a poor day to go out walking. Where on earth are you trying to get to? Nothing around here for miles. Nowhere in particular. I was just seeing where the path took me. Peter Jeffries, Colonel, retired. Alice. Glad to make your acquaintance, Alice. Don't get many visitors on board. The lights were off. I thought there was no one here. Afternoon snooze. It's an age thing. Recharges the batteries, though. Not much else you can do in weather like this. Now, you'll need some food too. When did you last eat? I'm not much of a cook, but I'm an expert when it comes to beans on toast. Years of practice. Please don't go to any trouble. Nonsense. I'll have to be making a move soon anyway. <laughs> now, that is preposterous. No one is going back out in this weather. It's already six, soon be dark, and you're miles from anywhere. You can bunk down in the forward cabin tonight, see what it's doing in the morning. No, it's okay. I mean, that's very kind, but I have my tent, you see. You mean the one floating down the river? Look, Alice, it's dark, it's raining, you're cold and tired, and your things are wet. I assure you, you're much better off in the warm than outside in that. You can lock the door to your cabin. You've nothing to fear from a silly old fool like me. 
Are you a gentleman as well as an officer? Colonel Jeffreys, at your service, ma'am. Thank you so much. That was delicious. Good Lord. Never heard my beans on toast described as delicious. Told you I was good. <laughs> I mean, you've been very kind. Nonsense. Least a chap can do for a lady in distress. Can I help you wash up? No thanks, oh, I can manage. Just make yourself comfortable. You know, I do love messing about on the river. Even in terrible weather. Often think I should have been Navy, not Army. It does get a bit lonely at times, and it's always tricky managing the locks when you're by yourself. But I just love it. There's something about the water. It's another world. All your cares drift away when you're on the water. And a bit of solitude is good for the soul. Switch your mobile phone off, and it's so you don't exist. No one can find you. <laughs> Still, it's very nice to have visitors, whatever the circumstances. Now, you haven't told me where you come from, or indeed, where you're going. Good morning. Did you sleep well? Yes, thanks. Sorry I dropped off. Couldn't help it. No need to be sorry, my dear. I expect you needed the rest. Now, the water's piping hot if you need a shower. It's back there in the rear cabin. The shampoo and all the bits and pieces in there. Thanks. Breakfast is at 0900. Then we tidy up, cast off at 10.30 hours, and set a course for a midday rendezvous with the Duke of Wellington. A pub in Lower Croxley. Rain has certainly freshened things up. Yes. I hadn't noticed how beautiful it is. I really should get going. Unless you'd forgotten, my dear, your home floated down the river last night. Even if we were to chase after it, it would have gone over the weir by now. Look, we're going the same way, so why don't you catch a lift? Anyway, I live up the river a couple of days cruising, and I could use a hand with the locks. It's a bit tricky steering this thing and doing the locks yourself. Uh, you'll be earning your passage and doing me a favour at the same time. And when we get there, you can go on your way. How does that sound? Sounds good. Good. That's settled.
Now, you haven't told me where home is. No, I can call home, really. Well, how do you know you're going the right way? I'll know when I get there. By yourself? I'm quite happy with my own company, which isn't to say it hasn't been a pleasure meeting you, Colonel. Peter. Peter. short walk from here, through those trees and up that bank. Not quite as grand as it once was, and a bit decrepit, just like me really. Come on, we're going to see if the place is still in one piece. get on the bus to wherever. Okay. Uh, I won't take no for an answer. It's okay. not as if... <laughs> Excellent! Well, uh, we'll rustle up a, a nice dinner and then have an early night. Will it be beans on toast? <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, I have fresh vegetables from the garden and I'm sure there's something in the freezer to go with them. Mind you, I can't promise a gourmet supper. Not my strongest point, Jeffrey. Are you a cook? I get by. Do you know, I was hoping you'd say that. Let me cook something for you. It's the least I can do. Excellent. I'll see what I can knock up. Right then, come on, I'll show you to your room. There, make yourself at home. One suite and dressing room through there. You should find everything you need. And there are lots of clothes in the drawers and cupboards you're welcome to. Feel free. You should find something to fit. Whose room is this? My daughter Lisa's. Won't she mind? No, she's away at the moment. But what if she comes back and finds me here wearing her things? No, she won't. She hasn't been home for a while. Please, take your time. Settle in. I'll go and dig up some spuds. I'll see you downstairs when you're ready. sight for sore eyes. Would you like a glass of wine? Yes, thank you. Please, sit.
No, Alice, I don't know where you came from and I don't know where you're going, but I'm very pleased I found you huddled under my canopy the other evening. You know, I know nothing about you. You've been very reserved. I'm sorry. No, 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 stop there. I was simply stating a fact. You mustn't worry about it. I am certainly not. And I'm not being nosy, just concerned. I need you to know that I'm a founder member of MYOBS. <laughs> the Mind Your Own Business Society. Now, what about this dinner I've been promised? Dinner coming up, Colonel. At 19.30 hours. Ha! <laughs> Marvellous. Don't hesitate to shout if you want a hand. Although I'm best kept out of it, to be honest. I'm sure I'll manage. <laughs> Morning. Thank goodness for that. Thank goodness for what? You know, when I was out, I had this horrible feeling that when I got back, you might be gone. Gone? Well, I just thought, you know, you seemed anxious to be on your way. I'm so relieved you decided to stay. Well, Just I... for a couple of days. I... I got us some nice fish in town. Thought I might impose on your culinary excellence again. Okay, that would be nice. And a nice bottle of Prosecco for aperitif. Lovely. And a shabbly for the Dover soul. Okay, I give in. <laughs> anyway, you've got to stay to the weekend now. What's happening at the weekend? What's happening at the weekend? Oh, I dropped in to see my lawyer, Michael. I haven't seen him and Emma, that's his wife, for a while. So I invited them over for Sunday lunch. Told them what a brilliant cook you were. God, Peter. What? You'll be fine. They're lovely people and they're dying to meet you. Only tea in that pot. Welcome, welcome. Peter, darling, how lovely to see you. Emma, you're looking radiant, as ever. Thank you. How was your trip up the river? Marvellous, thank you. Michael. Hello, old man. Bottle of plomb for you there. Oh, thank you. Was there much traffic? No, not much for a Sunday. Well, come into the drawing room and I'll get us all a drink. Now, what will it be? Prosecco? Oh, I love Prosecco. Me too. Michael. Tonic and lime, old boy. I'd better be good. I'll be back in a sec. Right, I'll take the drink through. Please, come through and say hello when you get a moment. Here we are. Peter, have you had a tidy? 
Last time we were here, the place looked like a bomb site. Like an old man lived here by himself. Well, there'll be a good reason for that. Ah, yes. We're dying to meet her. I do hope Peter hasn't imposed us upon you. When you've known him as long as we have, he'll find it's par for the cause. I hope you haven't gone to too much trouble for us. No, I mean, yes, I mean, it's fine. Just not sure what it'll taste like. Yeah, it'll be excellent, as usual. Well, I must get back in case something boils over. Excuse me. Can I help? Oh, no, thank you, I can manage. Dumbstruck for a moment. Oh, first time for everything. Where on earth did you find her? She rather found me, Emma. I'll tell you later. But I would appreciate your views. some coffee. Excellent. I'll come and help. No, I can manage. That was a wonderful lunch, Alice. Thank you. Lunch at Peter's is such a rare event these days. It's about time he got himself a new housekeeper. I'm not his housekeeper. Oh, I must have misunderstood. No, I just bumped into Peter and he was kind enough to help me out. Conversation over lunch. I still feel I know nothing about you. There's not much to tell. <laughs> if I may say, when everyone made a simple inquiry into your background, you seemed adept at steering the conversation towards another subject. Did I? Peter knows nothing about you either. He hasn't asked. That's not his way. Who are you, Alice? We're all the family that Peter has, so you'll forgive me if I sound overprotective. He's been through a lot of pain. We don't want to see him hurt again. I'm not here to hurt Peter. Then why are you here? I don't know. I'd be gone by now if he hadn't invited you and Michael over for lunch. He wanted us to meet you. What for? A second opinion? Oh no, his mind is quite made up. What do you mean? Best Peter tell you that in his own good time. Emma, what happened to Lisa? I can't explain that to you, Alice. Only Peter can.
extraordinary. I know. Especially in that dress. I just can't make her out. He has no references, you know. He hasn't asked her anything about herself. It's very worrying. Peter's a big boy. I'm sure he knows what he's doing. I think I'll turn in. You must be tired after all that hard work. I'm fine. I got used to long hours. Well, it was an excellent day. Thank you. Hope Emma and Michael didn't frighten you too much. No, not at all. They're nice people. Emma thinks I'm your new housekeeper. Yes. Sorry about that. The thing is, I had a housekeeper until quite recently. Latvian girl. Very pretty, reasonable English, but she moved on, got a bit bored, I expect. And you didn't try and replace her? Well, I thought I could manage. Yvetta was recommended to me, and the thing is, it's always a risk taking on someone you don't know. You don't know me. Maybe I know all I want to know. Look, I need some help. I don't know what your plans are, but I should be very grateful if you would stay a while, see how it goes. I'll give you a salary, you've got your own space. All you need to do is keep the place tidy and do a bit of cooking. Well, what do you say? But how do you know you can trust me? I can trust you, Alice. My name's not Alice. I know. It's Jess. So, why Alice? I wanted to be someone else. I see. My full name is Jessica Ann Khalid. Khalid? I was 17 when I married Mike. He was very handsome and charming and different. And I needed to get away from home. I loved my mum. My dad drank a lot. And then he would hit my mum. She just took it. Pretended nothing had happened and just used makeup to cover the marks. Then, when I got a bit older, he used to come up to my room. At night, he was always gentle. He would never hurt me, but I knew it wasn't right. I got more and more frightened every time he came, especially when he was drunk. And I knew how mad he could get, so I just let him. He said I was a good girl, and that all dads were the same, and that it was just between him and me, so I shouldn't talk to anyone about it. He said Mum knew. She was fine with it. When I saw the sadness in her eyes, I knew it wasn't true. So I used to stay out late just to avoid him. That's when I met Mo. He was very kind. 
and generous and gave me presents and wine, which made me feel better. He said he wanted me to be his girlfriend. And then when he asked me to move in with him, I just said yes. Dad was not happy. He shouted and screamed. I had to get out of there. So I got married straight away. Got a cleaning job and we rented a house. I had Layla six months later. My baby. Mo was earning lots of money driving cabs, so we bought a house. He said I didn't need to work. He was always out, working nights and weekends. Hardly ever saw him. I never saw his family either. And although Mo always wore a big watch and fancy gold bracelets and chains, Layla and I never had much to live on. He used to give us money for food, and that was it. Thing was, he was involved in drugs and gambling. And young girls, him and his mates, there was a gang of them. I know because he brought them round once. Told me to take Layla upstairs and to not come down. I heard them talking. I heard girls' voices. Crying. In my house. After a while he changed. He got anxious and angry. And once he raised his hand to me. And although he never hit me, I knew it was just a matter of time. And one day his mates came round and it was a big argument and I realised I was in trouble. I found a letter he'd got from the bank. We hadn't paid the mortgage in six months. So I went back to cleaning because we needed the money. These horrible guys would come round and he took most of it to pay them off. wouldn't talk to me about anything. Certainly not money. I tried, but he just got angry. pick Layla up from preschool. But she wasn't there. He said Mo had already collected her. Then when I got home they weren't there. Called him and left messages and then called his mum but she said she hadn't seen him. For a couple of hours I got panicky and called the police. 
They said they weren't missing yet, it was too soon. I didn't sleep that night. Then I called his mum again the next morning. She said he'd gone. Back to Pakistan. Nobody would do anything. Please just fold me off. So I went to London to the Home Office. They said they'd make inquiries, but nothing happened. I went to their embassy, but nobody would even see me. saw them again. <laughs> Mum suddenly got ill. But before she died, she, she made me promise to look after Dad. His drinking had caught up with him. Without mum, he went downhill fast, had to go into a home. Mo had left all these debts. And these men would come round every week, and I had to pay them. So I couldn't pay my council tax, electric. Then, just before the house was repossessed, I found out at work the trouble I was in. They fired me. And the very same night, Dad died. No job, no house, nothing. I destroyed everything with Jess's name on it. I just left. I didn't want to be Jess anymore. And how is Alice now? Afraid. Don't be afraid. Nothing here can harm you. If Alice would like to start her new life here, looking out for an old fool, then she'll find an old fool who'll be very grateful. Thank you. Being kind. Now, off to bed. You've got work in the morning. Good night. Good night, Alice.
I love being out here. We never had a proper garden like this. Well, I never did gardening before, what with the army. Just picked it up when I retired. Rather enjoyed it. <laughs> Still don't know what I'm doing half the time. But when you're retired, you've got to work at something. Keep the brain cells active. Emma taught me a lot. A great gardener, Emma. She said they were the only family you had. Peter, what happened to Lisa? I'm sorry, I shouldn't have asked. This is my father's house. When he died, I took early retirement and moved here with my second wife. My first wife couldn't cope with the army. We didn't have children. And once, whilst I was away on tour, she had an affair. We divorced. I met Janneke in Yugoslavia, as was. I was serving with the UN Protection Force and she was a translator. She was some years younger than me. Montenegrin, very beautiful. We got married and quite unexpectedly had Lisa. She was a joy. We were blissfully happy when she was growing up. Life could not have been better. You would have thought army training would teach me to expect the unexpected. Yannicka died three years ago. Leukemia. She and Lisa were like sisters, she used to go everywhere together. So Lisa took it very hard. Just couldn't come to terms with it. She once asked me, why daddy? Why did it happen? And all I could say was, because it happened, get on with it. I didn't mean to sound heartless, and it wasn't that I wasn't feeling anything. Quite the opposite. I was torn apart inside. I just thought I had to be the strong soldier for her. Lisa retired into a shell, and I couldn't bring her back. We grew steadily apart. Then she announced she was taking a gap year to Nepal with her friend from university. Initially I was quite worried, but then I thought it would be a good experience for her. Give her a different perspective on life and death. She phoned me a couple of times when she got there. She seemed fine. Full of life, happy. But then after a while, contact dwindled. She didn't come home as planned. So I got in touch with her friend, who said that Lisa had decided to stay on a while longer. And the ball was hit by the earthquake. I contacted the embassy, all the aid agencies. There was no sign of her. I did everything I could from here, and then, in desperation, flew to Kathmandu. Found a mountain guide who remembered her. He said that she'd gone to teach children in a village called Bang Tang. And did you go to Bang Tang? Bang Tang was buried. That's right. Totally wiped off the face of the earth. I have to assume she's dead, but I don't know for certain. I just hope wherever she is, she is at peace. I'm so sorry. I loved her dearly. I can't bear to think she may not have known that. How could she not? I don't think I ever told her. 
enough. It's just life. And everybody just needs to get on with it. Whatever you want to do is fine by me. Peter, I'd be failing in my duty were I not to ask, are you absolutely sure about this? Yes, I'm sure. And you've thought through all the implications? I've thought of little else for the last six months. Anyhow, I've got to get a move on, according to Mr Edwards. And is that what's driving this? Partly. But it's time I put things right. You can't carry that cross forever, my friend. OK. I'll prepare the papers and I'll send them to you. No, don't send them to the house. Let me know when you're ready. I'll come back next week. As you wish. Now, about this other matter. I know what you're going to say. You're going to say it's a waste of time and money. I know it's not going to be easy. You'll need professional help. But I don't care how much it costs. I want to do it properly this time. Before it's too late. But. How do you know that she's still alive? I know she's out there, Michael. And if she is, that she wants to come back. Just find her and bring her home. Granddad's found us some potatoes. Yeah. One. Two. Come on then. That's my favourite lawyer. Michael, what? That's... that's... When? Two weeks? Oh, why so long? I know it's only, but... Okay, okay, I understand. I won't. I won't. I'll wait. I'll wait. No, I mean yes. How can I ever thank you? Oh, Lisa, forgive me. I can't wait to see you again. I love you. 
Sophie? Lucy? Hold hands. Stay there. Hello, Michael. I thought I'd find you out here. Hello, Uncle Mikey. Hello, princesses. Hey, you two. Go and see Auntie Emma up at the house. She's got a present for you. Don't run and hold hands with each other. What are we going to do, Michael? May I call you Jess? Yes, of course. Peter told you. Yes. He told me a long time ago. Then he must have told you I've nothing but a bad history. You've got two beautiful daughters, and I hope some good memories of your time here with Peter. What's going to happen to us? I can't stay here. I feel like I'm trespassing already. I still owe lots of people lots of money. You don't owe anything, Jess. Peter settled it all. We did some research, tracked them down, and cleared it. There's no history. Peter. I never got a chance to thank him. And as far as staying here is concerned, you, Sophie, and Lucy can stay for as long as you like. It's what Peter wanted. But... It's why I came to see you. It's yours, Jess. Peter left you everything. But why would he... Because he loved you. And he loved his grandchildren. He did it before they were born made sure that you would always be safe. He loved his family. You are his family. I never knew. He didn't want you to know. He didn't want you to feel any obligation to stay with him, nor for that matter, any incentive. He just wanted you to be safe. He was a wonderful father to me. And a good friend to me. Are we going to miss him? There's one other thing. At the same time as Peter changed his will, he instructed me to do something else. 
something that seemed impossible at the time. There's someone here to see you.